Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds, and we've got another absolutely brilliant podcast for you today. So what you should do before anything starts is subscribe, okay? I believe we are we are a triple Nelson, 111 subscribers away from our 1,000 subscriber goal. So please tell your friends, subscribe, like, it really helps us out. Yeah. Um, today, we're going to be talking about England versus South Africa, the first ODI that's literally just finished just at the time of recording, and uh, India versus New Zealand, their first T20. Um, we'll go into South Africa first. Now, it was it was a pretty brisk start from the South African batters. Um, and I would just like to highlight that in our previous video, which you should check out, um, we previewed the the South Africa versus England ODI series. And I said that if England bat second, they'll probably lose. I also said, I'm very scared of Rassie van der Dussen. So I'm kind of a genius. Um, <laughs> and, but in all the wrong ways. <laughs> but, in, but in ways that I didn't want to be a genius. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, it started off very briskly. Uh, Quinton de Kock and Temba Bavuma both getting off to flyers, really. Um and then they stumbled, uh, Timber in particular throwing away his wicket. And then Rassi steps up to the plate and he gets 111, which incidentally is the amount of subscribers that we need to reach 1,000. Um, and that really cemented the South Africa innings. What did you think of, of their batting? Well, like you said, it was a good start. And... At one stage, South Africa were looking like maybe 350 was on the cards, which at the moment is probably the... It was a good batting track. It's the sort of score you want to get on a good batting track. It's at least 350. That puts the opposition team in a lot of pressure. But I reckon if South Africa had scored 350, England probably would have won, knowing England um, and the way they like to play. Whereas 298, that's a bit of a, a middle, middle-of-the-road score which can trip up a lot of teams. Um, because... It, at one stage, South Africa were, were doing really well. And then England kind of did their classic one day, just take regular uh, wickets at regular intervals, which they did um, through everyone, but mostly Sam Curran, who I thought was by far England's best bowler. Um, everyone else kind of did okay. Adel Rashid looked all right. Moe Nali had some okay control until he got a bit of tap. Um, but yeah, Sam Curran... I don't know if it's the left arm angle or if it's he just strategically bowled better. He seemed to have a better read of the conditions and it was those banging half uh, trackers really, which were causing Batson the most trouble and ended up being the undoing of, of England. Um, but when you look at South Africa's bat at batting, you think it's, it's suited to one day cricket um, because they can play at the tempo that's good for them. And then they've got players like Heinrich Klaassen and David Miller to kind of finish the job at the end. So it, it does look quite a good batting lineup, but I do feel like they, they would have thought they were a bit a few short today. I agree. Um, and going into the batting innings for England, I thought they really had the upper hand, especially when they got off to a really, really good opening partnership. Um and it was a real shame because, you know, 146 was the opening partnership. And then David Milan fell um, just at the sort of stroke of 90, uh, 20 overs. He got very well made 59. And Jason Roy, brilliant to see him getting back to form with uh, a century. I really hope this is the start of him actually like returning to form because he has been Needed. in the most atrocious form for so long that... Yeah. You could see the emotion on his face. Um, he really needed that. And then three and four, Ben Duckett and Harry Brook, really unfortunate um, to see them just quite weak wickets, I thought, um, quite soft yeah. dismissals. And that that really was the first big blow to England's innings. Um, it wasn't so much, you know, Roy and Milan, they did their job. Uh, it was Duckett and Brook that really stalled um, and then uh, somebody else that I want to talk about a little bit is Moeen Ali. Mm. Is because I really rate Moeen Ali. I think he's got, a, you know, I think he's been brilliant for a long time, great all rounder. But is there a more inconsistent batter in world cricket than Moeen Ali? I think, 
I've been having some thoughts about Mo and Ali. I was thinking on the way home because when I was on the way home from from work, England were, were during that opening partnership, and I thought a collapse could happen. And I was thinking about Mo and Ali and how he's probably involved in every single England collapse that's ever happened. Mm-hmm. If there's an England collapse, he's normally at the centre of it. Because and um, you're always like, oh, he just played a terrible shot. And I don't know if it's that he just can't cope with the pressure. If you look at the rest of England's team, you feel like they've they've got the innings to kind of put the onus back on the opposition to to really stamp down and get back the control of the game. Whereas I feel like Mo Ali doesn't have that ability. I've never seen him play that sort of innings. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some people in the comments can say, well, what about this innings that he played? I'm sure he has, but. More often than not, I feel like Moe Nally doesn't have that momentum absorbing sort of innings in him. Mm. Um, I don't know if, if that's, I'm just waffling there, but I, that's how I feel. I feel like he just can't uh, put, put the momentum back in England's favour sometimes. And then also, I think by that time during the collapse, South Africa had that read of the conditions better because at the start of their their bowling innings, they didn't really do what England had done well in the middle overs. You kind of look at what the opposition opposition's done well and you try and do it back. And it was only really when Sisanda Magala, who I think is a, a great bowler, he's mm. he's plays that sort of enforcer role through the middle overs for South Africa, paired with Anrik Norkia, that back of a length hitting the deck sort of bowling caused England a lot of trouble. Mm. And it was hard to score off and it just picked up loads of wickets. Yeah, very high skilled. Um, mm. Right. We'll move on because from one kind of return to form to another, um, both in losing causes, Washington Sundar had an absolute blinder of a game against New Zealand. New Zealand did take the win, um, just regular wickets and an outstanding spell from Mitchell Santner, um, ably supported by Michael Bracewell. Um, sort of, I think it was in the power play as well and Lockie Ferguson. Mm-hmm really just stomped down on any hope that India had. But Washington Sundar, bowling, took two for 22 off his four. So Mr. Economy is back. And Mm -hmm. with the bat, 50 off 28 rocks. That is brilliant. Like that, I'm so glad because Washington Sundar is somebody that I really like watching. I think he's got so much skill and he's got Mm. such a, he gets an unusual amount of turn for an off spinner especially yeah. with his action. Like it just, it looks so face on and everything, but seeing return to form was really nice. What did you think of, um, what did you think of Daryl Mitchell? Cause he's somebody else that kind of gone off the boil a bit, but he was really yeah. good. He's always been there or thereabouts for New Zealand. He's always playing for them. He's always doing well with the bat. He's kind of Mr. Consistent for New Zealand uh, in a way. Um, and I think he kind of, goes under the radar a bit in a classic New Zealand way because you look at Finn Allen as being the up-and-coming superstar for them. Uh, Devon Conway, he's very good at the top of the order. Glenn Phillips, destructive in that in those middle overs, whereas Daryl Mitchell's kind of there or thereabouts without really asserting himself. Um, whereas he had a very good 2020 World Cup, maybe not last time, but the time before. Or was it last time? Uh, no, it was the time uh, before. No, the time, time before, before he had a very good 2020 World Cup. Um, and so, yeah, we, we know he's got it in him and he played a very good innings and New Zealand, they played the the game really well. They scored lots of runs in the power play. They scored lots of runs at the death. They took lots of wickets in the power play and they were able to finish off the game really well. Um, Mm. it was just Washington Sundar was kind of on his own. So they, they played a very good sensible game of cricket and India couldn't really do much about it. Um, However, what did you think of, of India's batting lineup? Because they, other than Surya Kumar Yadav coming in at four, there wasn't much experience there. No, there wasn't. I thought it was really interesting. Um, I think Hardik Pandya really likes to do a lot himself. That's a, mm. that's a theme I've noticed whenever he's a captain. Um, so, you know, him opening the bat- bowling and batting at five and everything, I I understood it. And I think it makes sense. Um, But he doesn't really play the finisher role that well. Uh, well, Sorry, he doesn't really play the finisher role, which he should because he plays it very well. Um, But the rest of them, I think he was 
I, I think it's a good looking squad, but Deepak Huda at seven, I don't think is good. I, I think we've 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 learned by now that he needs to go higher up. Um other than that, I'm looking forward to the next ep- the the next T twenty between them where we can learn a little bit more, learn a bit more about the players. So yeah, that's where we're gonna end it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help us out. You can follow our socials. You can do a lo- load of good stuff. Leave comments down below. Leave your CNQs, your Cricket Nerds questions. Really do appreciate it. Goodbye.